There's no class of particulate. But uh, you can, if you want, lay down add a name for it, <laughs> if you want to make it a class. Uh, this is a very hard topic. It's, it's called the semi-supervised learning. Semi-supervised learning is uh, because the training data is so expensive to produce, to prepare, especially medical data. And then, without those data, you still can different groups of diseases. You, based on the um, attributes, you can see this is a different uh, disease from the other one. And then you do the clustering and make the groups of different uh, uh, diseases, different genotype, and uh, later on, you manually train. You know, oh, this group should be have this, I name them this class, and they use this, and the training further. That means the human being only did half of the job. In the first, you start from machine, the human intervened in the middle, classify it a little bit, and they can do it again. And based on this, they learn more, learn better, and then that's the so-called semi supervising. In another word, not all the training data are prepared to explore how many possibilities are natural, how you should group it before you even name it. And that's how exactly the galaxies are funded, because they really look at the distance and the cluster in them, and the later on, based on the shape, they give them a name, and those names can use it to do other, you know, in the same way. So most of they, these days, especially in the medical field, the genotype, they are doing semi-supervising. The first part is by the clustering and the fund, and then human beings start to look at it, and they name it, and uh, label it. And they use this to do the better clustering again, and then after they finally satisfy the result, they're going to label it use as a training data to do the first. And that's much more effective and cheap. And that's all the same. Say now, who never have the data, who have who is the key? Just like money, who never own the data. The data is expensive. Oh, well, what well, depends on this? The keyword is the similarity and the dissimilar. Each other. How are you going to measure in the mathematics? So if you look at those kind of data, is uh, both objective and the subjective. <laughs> Let me put it that way. In an objective order, you can think about at least you see these are two different groups, right? But you can first look at those are two different groups. Can you see clusters? And it's really up to you if you want two uh, clusters, that's two clusters. But if you want uh, three clusters or four clusters, then that's a four. That's a six. That's why K mean. A K means uh, Two mean, three mean, or four mean, six mean. This K is uh, up to you. That's why I said both subjective and objective. The subjective is you determined to make a six or a two. It's a little bit subjective because you predetermined the K. The objective is these two are cross, uh, close each other, these are close each other. Can you see it? Right? It really depends on how close you mean close enough. Right? And uh, clearly, these two groups have much more distance each other than here, have distance to each other. That's the objective part, right? So what the mathematicians are doing? This to give you the language to measure things, what the physicists are doing. Give you the instrument to measure things, right? And we try to measure it. We give you the language. So. That's the text clusters. Uh, look at the fuzzy word. Oh, you go to the, uh, what's it called? Word niche. And uh, there's a ratio. You put the, the, the keyword, that they're going to give you the size of this uh, frequency of the data. The size of this uh, uh, iPhone tell you how frequent uh, this, this word is can. Improving, how many times the sale, and uh, based on the size of the network, they can know what kind of article is this. That's how you classify those articles. You know, the keywords, you always have the keywords, and how frequent this keyword is particularly appear in a particular field, then you know all those things. And then uh, 
the network, and you can easily classify different articles. And the same, these days, there's a lot of tools to shoot you automatically what you are interested based on what you published. You know, when you publish some papers, they know, okay, you might be interested in that, like this guy's paper. That's always common. So very careful, use which word you use. Use the try the terminology here. You say hydrogen and the fountains. You look at those, you know progress nuclear physics, right? Another one is the hierarchical cluster. Basically, just like the text on something, or a better word, oncology. Oncologists really know particular research about how you can organize that field with those vocabulary, the terminology. Um, so there's a two basic group. One is bottom up, another is top down. You have this many entities, uh, points whatever you want as an element or instance. Uh, one way is to uh, start from how many instances, how many points you have, then how many clusters you have. And then based on the similarity, you merge, merge, merge to subgroup until you merge to one group, one cluster, or k cluster, depends on you, how many you want to solve. And that's called the bottom up. Another one is uh, top down, start from one cluster. Everybody in the one cluster, then you measure the distance if I split in two, split in four, and uh, assign the centroid, and then you're going to overall reduce this uh, total distance to the center. We're going to look at that point. K means at the most uh, common popular technique. Very natural, easy, very easy to know, to understand. Um, so, the K is what you predetermine. You want to make it uh, five group, six group, how do you do that? Through the visualization, maybe, right? In e either way, you decide what's the K. And then, random or sometimes uh, systematic guess where is the centroid of each of the group cluster. Let's just say uh, we decide to have two. Then one center there, one center here, split a little bit. And then next step, you're going to um, look at the distance from each point to the center, which is closest to, to that point. And then you assign this to the group, which have the shortest distance. And then after you assign those points, you know your center is not a right center. So you assign the not the real center. You're going to use what you learned in calculus to find the centroid. After you find the real centroid, and uh, you are going to reassign because once the centroid changed, the points assignment also changed. Right? Make sense? So it's just uh, you rent and guess which star belongs to which galaxy, and then uh, point at the center, which maybe is the biggest star, what you want to do. And then after you look at the distance, you always uh, associate with the closest center. Everybody look at that leader, right? Make sense? And then. Ironically, this leader, after you assigned the group, they started to move to real to the center instead of the assigned center based on the weight, the calculation. Simple idea. Sigma, like uh, xi, just like you find the center. If the center in the middle, two points, one half, right? If this is a little heavy, this is a little light, this center will be lean towards the heavy one, right? And that's the basic physics size. And then you update the center, you need to reassign the points. Sometimes when the center moves to the other bit this way, originally this belongs to that group, maybe belongs to this group. And then you reassign to the point, and then you recalculate the center, you reassign the point, you recalculate the center. After a little while, you know what? They're going to stabilize. They're no longer change. What changes? The point swapping groups, 
less than 1%, let's say. Then you say, okay, good enough, stop. Make sense? Just uh, a, a couple of calculations. So if we want a global solution, that's the objective function. Very simple. You have K centers, CI, CI, 2D, 3D, or maybe 100D, if you look at abstract data. And then X is your point in this group based on the distance. So if this X, I belongs to all the CI, those are all the group in CI, you want to all the distance square in all the clusters minimized. What does what that mean? If you have two groups, this is one center, there's a hundred points, have a hundred distance, you square that. This is another group, you have another 900 points with the 900 distance, you summarize, and then you add the both, need to be minimized. Sometimes you maybe move a little bit to this way, or maybe move this center, a little bit will be better, right? That's how you are moving the points each time. It makes sense? That's a very easy calculation. Mm -hmm. Okay. 